Hi, my name is Tracy. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I came to celebrate recovery with addictions to methamphetamines, alcohol, and being a sexual abuser. I love Celebrate Recovery in the entire ministry, and I'm blessed to be a part of the leadership in our ministry at Celebrate Recovery at Christ Community Church in Carmichael, California. One of the things I really love about being in the leadership of the ministry is that I am able to be a part of the 101 group. It's for newcomers, people that have never been to Celebrate Recovery and never experienced it. I have the opportunity to share with them the history of the ministry, John Baker and how he developed it through the Spirit of Christ. And then I get to sit with them and explain the different groups that we have at our church that the following week he would be able to attend help them identify what group they may go into. I also explain to them the group guidelines, which are the DNA of Celebrate Recovery. It's what keeps the meeting safe and it keeps the participants safe, that they're free to share openly and honestly from their hearts. In our Celebrate Recovery, we have these little yellow cards. They're connect cards. And on that, I get the person's name, email, and phone number if they want to give it to me. The following, during that next week, I will call them and connect with them and find out how they're doing, if they have any more questions, and to try and encourage them to come back to Celebrate Recovery. Well, right before the outbreak happened and the lockdown came down, uh, I was involved in a 101 group. I got a card from a young man. I gave him a call. And then about two weeks later, when we went into lockdown and the meetings were shut down, he called me. And we had a really nice conversation. It was very interesting and I don't think it's unique to a lot of people and that's why I wanted to share that with all of you today. One of the guidelines in Celebrate Recovery that we hold strictly is anonymity and confidentiality because that's what keeps it safe. So I'm not going to say this young man's name and uh, I'm not going to describe his actual um, hurts, habits, or hangups with all of you. But I wanted to portray it in a way I wanted to let you know how it went down. So I asked a friend to join me during this time. Um, I'm safe. I'm not, I'm, I do not have the virus and neither does he and he can't get it either. How you doing today? Fine. Hello. Yeah, it's good to have you here. It's good to be here. So this is my friend who is portraying the young man and the conversation that we had on the phone the following week after Celebrate Recovery was locked down. Hi, how are you doing tonight? Well, I'm doing okay, I guess, but... Um, well, what's the matter? I, I don't know. Celebrate Recovery sounds good, but I don't know if it's for me. Well, why would you say that? Well... I don't have a drug or alcohol problem. I just, I don't know. You, you don't know. Hold on, hold on. It's okay. I, so, what is your hurt right now? Uh, I never feel good enough. I, I have really low self-esteem, and I'm afraid people that I like are gonna leave me. Well, that's, that's really pretty common. Really? Yeah, it's, that's what led me to Celebrate Recovery. I never felt good enough or that I fit in. I never felt like I was smart enough. And so I just tried to hide out in the shadows and disappear. And then I found a crowd of people that would accept me. Who were they? Well, they were not the right kind of people. They were the people that used drugs. Oh, now easy. Easy, let me finish. They were the kind of people that used drugs, and because of that, they didn't have any expectation of me. So I fit in. Oh. Yeah, but the fitting in led to me having a straight-up addiction to meth and to alcohol. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Ooh. Well, what did you do? Well, I, first of all, I found the Lord. And through the Lord, he led me to celebrate recovery. And there I met a lot of other people who were just like me. Oh. So where, where did your insecurities come from? Well, I was paired up with a partner. And one day, we went and 
jogging, and that was cool. <laughs> I like to run. Well, that's good. And then we hung out for a day in the in the hamper together. Yeah. And then we went and took a hot sauna bath with soap and everything. It was nice. Well, good for you. Yeah. And then we took the hot tumble sauna. Hot tumble sauna? Yeah. It's really dark. I'm not sure what happened. But I was all dried off when it was over. And then, then what happened? Well, then the door opened, the light came on, and he was gone. <gasps> he was gone? Yeah. I never saw my partner again. Well, what happened? I don't know. I think the hot sauna ate him. Wow, the hot sauna ate him? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so how did that lead to where you are right now? Well, I never felt like I belonged to anyone. That I was the outcast and no one wanted me around. So I started dusting the dressers and cleaning the blinds and doing things that I'm not really meant to do. I, I totally get that. You do? Yes, I do. Wow. See, you're not so different from a lot of people who feel like they're outcasts and they're a little different from everyone else. Really? Yeah. And because of some of those feelings, it has led many of us to do things that we wouldn't normally do. Things that were outside of our, our original plan that God had for us. Wow. So there is connection for you at Celebrate Recovery. I don't want you to stop giving up. And just because we're not meeting, we can still talk on the phone. Really? Yeah, really. You're going to be my friend? I'll be your friend. Thank you, Tracy. Well, you're welcome, Lefty. Oh. Should, should I say that introduction thing now? If, if you want to. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Hi. My name is Lefty, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. And I struggle with low self-esteem. Hmm. Very good. That's a good job. Oh, thank you. Hey, would you like to do the serenity prayer with me? Uh, I have it right here. You can read it if you want to. Okay. Here it is. Do I start it? If, if you want. No. Okay, I'll start it. God. God. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You do it. Okay. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right. If I surrender to your will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life. I get this, I get this. And supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen. Good job. Hey, so any of you out there who are struggling and you're not sure if Celebrate Recovery is for you or can help you, if it can help a sock like me, it can help you, a child of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Lefty. So, as weird as that is, that's kind of how the conversation went. He shared with me a hurt in his heart and something that happened in his past, and I related to it. And I shared with him my, my connection with that. And that Celebrate Recovery worked for me in that. And it can work for you in that. And it can work for Lefty in that. Me! Okay, get back down. So, Celebrate Recovery is available for all people. And those of you that have been involved in Celebrate for Recovery for a long time, you know that. <clears throat> you get it. So share that with other people. Let them know your hurt, where you came from, the struggle you had. Because it's not just about these really obvious things of perhaps addiction or raging anger. Sometimes it's the really deep inside hurt that needs to be addressed. And there is no sin and no pain in life that is so big that God can't take care of. And there is no hurt in your life or sin in your life 
so small that God doesn't care about. So let God know. Let another person know. Be blessed. Stay sheltered in Christ in this week seven. I'll see you again. My name is Tracy. God bless you.